Hello, in today's video, I'm going to show you how I organize my landscape photography editing workflow. It's important. Okay, so after you have been out shooting your landscape photography, that's only part of the process. You've got your photograph in camera, then you have your post-processing, and then you're, you're gonna print it at the end. It's a three-step process. Once you've gone out, you've captured it all, it's in the camera, you're then coming back to post-processing it. There's nothing worse than having photos lost over several different hard drives, so it's important to have an efficient workflow that's gonna work for you now, and in the future. Before we get into the video today, I've got a few things that I need to update you on. Firstly, the reason I am not out and about today is I've got a dreadfully, dreadfully bad back. I'm not looking for any sympathy, but it is just the reason why today I'm in the studio and not out and about on a vlog. If you haven't seen my landscape photography vlogs yet, click up here to check out the playlist of all my landscape photography vlogs where I get out and about into the wilderness, up into mountains, near the sea, that kind of thing. Capture my landscape photography and you can really see how I go about capturing my work. Also, a couple of other things. If you haven't heard the First Man Photography podcast yet, make sure you check that out on iTunes, on all the places where you'll normally get your podcasts. Go and have a listen to it and let me know what you think. And then also very soon, and I'm excited about this, I have some landscape photography workshops coming up. I've had so many requests for people wanting to come out shooting with me. And I think the best way to do that is to start doing uh, workshops. The way I'm gonna do it is have sort of groups of three and we'll have a day out together, retrace the steps from one of the vlogs. You can watch that vlog if you're thinking about doing the workshop, see the sort of day you're gonna have, and then you can sign up for that workshop. At the moment, they're just one day workshops so it's the cost isn't going to be too great it's not going to blow the bank or anything like that and i think many of you will have a really great day and we can go shooting together so let's get into the computer just have a quick look at how i go about doing my workflow so you can see sort of how the whole thing works if you haven't tried lightroom or photoshop yet i'll put a link down below where you can get a free trial they are absolutely brilliant i use them all the time and they're well worth a look Okay, let's get into this. Okay, so here we are in Adobe Lightroom. What I didn't mention was this video is a little experiment I'm doing in shooting it in 4K. So if you have 4K capability, make sure you watch that drone footage at the start in 4K. It looks fantastic. Anyway, here we are in Lightroom and I'm currently in the library module. I like to have these bottom and top bars minimized just to give your screen the maximum amount of workspace. So the first thing to do when you come and import your photos is the way I do it is to just add a folder. I first copy the images to my hard drive and then I come up to here and click the plus there, add a folder, select the folder that you've created on your hard drive and then it will import it in. For the sake of this uh, video though, I have created a collection which is what you see in front of you here. These images are from my vlog last week where I trekked up Blencathra and I shot about 30 images in total, but there's 15 here just to give you an example. So when I import the images, it will look something like this and I will first go through it to select which images I'm going to use using a flag. Just one note on your file naming, I will name, I'll have a top level file like videos here. I'll then have a year, 
Sometimes I'll have a month and a day, depending on what type of shooting I'm doing. Uh, but you could but you could start with the top file as being something like weddings and then have the date, but it, it, how it works for you, it's important to get your file structure organized as well. So you'll, you'll know in the future where you can find something uh, when you're looking for it later on. Anyway, so it's important to go through first and decide which images we're going to use. So I've already picked this one because this one's already edited and this one here, that's no good. So I'm not going to pick that. That one has already been picked. You can see the little flag up here because I've already edited that one as well because I've already been through these, obviously. So this one, I'm not going to use. That's just a little test shot, I think. Then this one, this one, and this one are my bracketed shots for the sunset. So I'm going to pick that one. I'm going to pick that by clicking P on the keyboard and click that one as well. So those three are then picked. When I'm doing bracketing or a panorama, I like to know which images I've used in those uh, stitches or those combinations of shots because once you combine them, it's sometimes difficult to tell which individual shots we use to combine them. So I'm going to do that straight away. So just select the three images, hold shift down and select the final one. And then you can click six, seven, eight or nine to select a color. So I'm going to go with eight and that makes it green. So once I then right click on those images, I go down to photo merge. And then I go to HDR because it's bracketed and the HDR works really well for me. Sometimes I will use luminosity masking and do blending and things like that. But for a lot of the time, the HDR works for me. I auto align. I don't do any auto tone and I don't do deghosting either. And then I just click merge and that will then merge those images together into uh, what essentially is a HDR. I'm not going to have the HDR look really, but then that creates the HDR in that green color as well. So I can then go ahead and pick that one as well. And then I know that's the image I'm going to work on. And I then, I then know which three images have created that HDR as well. We'll come back to that though. Now these ones, I don't think I'm going to need to use these today. What it does show though is a little trick. If I just go full screen, this is my finger. And if you use your finger on a shot like this when you're bracketing or in any sunset shot, if you use your finger to cover the sun up a bit like in that one, it will take all of the flare out of the shot if you have the sun in your picture. You then combine them up in Photoshop, blend your finger out, and then you've got a perfect image with the sun in it and without any flare. So that's one good little trick, although I don't think I'm going to need it today because I don't really have any f much flare in this image at all. So it's gonna, I can still use it quite happily without using the shot with my finger in it. So I'm not going to need those shots, so I'm not going to pick them. This one and this one are images from my time lapse that I did for the day, so we're not going to use those either. So essentially we have, what do we have? Six images selected. So I'll then go down to here and click the flag icon, and that selects the images that you've picked. I will then go through, once I've edited them, if I do edit them, that is, I'll then give them a star rating. So I'll go three stars to start with, if it's a keeper, three stars there. And then later on, once I've edited the pictures and I'm happy with the keepers, so that will be this one here as well. Once we've edited it, I then know which my keepers. If you then click the star in the filter here, and that's my final image. And just go into here and we'll quickly just in fact i'm not going to edit the picture because you have seen it before i have the settings copied that i did use to edit it and this is not an editing video as such but i can just paste in the settings i used earlier is that going to work so that has worked that's what the image looked like you can see my settings over on the right hand side here and pretty much that it's as straightforward as that i'll then come back to the grid view you can see your final images now that we've got them flagged, we've got the star ratings on and we've got the color here because if we undo the star rating again, you can then see in the original lot, if we undo the flag as well, that's the whole shoot. And you can see the images that I've used for that final uh, bracketed shot using that green color. You can then filter it using your flag and your stars down to your final shots. So once I'm down at my final shots like this, I will then export them to a JPEG so I can share them online, on Instagram, on things like that, and just generally have a slightly smaller file to look through later on. So 
Let's hold shift down, select them all. I will go right click and then export. And then you come into the export window. You just click on full size. You don't have to. You can work different things that work for you. I've got all my presets down the side here. I've got a sort of smaller file size for my web sharing. Then I've got a setting to when I'm uploading it to my website and the time lapse there, which creates that beautiful 4 K video. So if I want to edit an image in Photoshop and I don't do that very often these days, I will right click and I'll go edit in, then click on edit in Adobe Photoshop CC. And then you just wait a minute as it loads into Photoshop. Once it's in Photoshop, you can make whatever changes you see fit. Let's just draw all over it just for the sake of this tutorial. And then you just hit Command S or Control S to save it. You can see the little save bit go in here and then it will transfer back in to Lightroom into position. So you've then got that Photoshop file in there. We're totally non-destructive with Lightroom as well. So you're not going to overwrite anything by doing those silly bits of painting onto your image. You can then export that directly from Lightroom, your edited Photoshop file. And that's how my workflow works. I will then generally copy once i've finished with a set of images i will because i'm using a macbook pro i'll take the images off the hard drive of the macbook pro and transfer it into my backup hard drive so i just unwind one of these buttons here and then it's just a case of drag and drop to move the folders around and it's better if you do it in lightroom as opposed to on your hard drive because then it will transfer the catalog from your it'll move the right files around within your catalog on lightroom as well and then you'll have all your edited pictures so when you're going to move your files around from hard drive to hard drive make sure you do it within lightroom and it just works much better so that's my landscape photography editing workflow it's worked well up to now and i'm pretty sure it's fairly future proof as well as long as i continue using adobe lightroom so that's it Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that. Please leave a comment down below and let me know what you think. Does your workflow differ from mine? Do you have any other tips or tricks that can help other people out? I would love to hear from you. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you do so. And if you are subscribed, click that little bell so you see or you get a notification of when my videos come out and you'll be able to, you won't miss a beat of First Man Photography. Anyway, I'll be back out and about next week, all being well and the back being a little bit better. But until then, I'll see you on another video very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography, out.